If you want to see this documentary uncut and ad free, check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality, where you can check out all my documentaries uncut, raw, and ad-free. The link is in the description below. Also support us on the Diverse Mentality Podcast, daily hip-hop news, debates, and even artist interviews. Check the link in the description below for that. And leave a like on this video. It really goes a long way. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. I mean, Eminem is Eminem. He's If you notice in hip-hop, Eminem is the only rapper that that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Me personally, um, nah, is Eminem better than me? Nah, he not, bro. The greatest rapper infinity all time is Eminem. Like, Eminem is not a better rapper than me, like, just rapping. Eminem, I, I don't think it's a rapper he won't slay, and you don't even want a war with Eminem, you, you know, he crazy. But as far as, like, being better than me, like, nah, Eminem is not better than me, bro. I'm better than him. I said it again, and I keep saying it again, bro. No, but I ain't f***ing with him. Why not M though? M's good. He's that good, right? He's really fucking good. And when he get to, I can't tell you what it really is. You, you're a grass, man. How I felt back then, I don't feel. I don't feel the same. I'm better today. And if I'm not, get up and let's rap. Let's rap. That's all I want to do is rap. What up guys, your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of What Really Happened. If you're not familiar with this series, it is the sister series to the Who Really Won series that I do. And on this series, I focus mainly on disagreements or one-sided battles between artists, and I focus on the newer generation of artists that are in a battle. So with that being said, this one is 100% one-sided so far. Nothing has been said on the other side. And as you can tell by the video title, I'm going to be talking about the game versus Eminem, what really happened. If you haven't seen my game versus Jay-Z, what really happened, go ahead and check that out. At least on that one, Jay-Z responds at some points. But even on that one, it was one-sided a lot of the time. And you can also check out the game versus 50 Cent, who really won. That one is more of a serious beef with diss tracks back and forth. But with that being said, the game versus Eminem is a fairly new situation. The game initially never had issues with Eminem up until recently. So I want to go over the history of the relationship between the game and Eminem and what exactly led up to this moment of the game dissing him. So with that being said, grab a drink, grab some popcorn. We're going to go over what exactly started this situation and then we'll go over the major points and then we'll go over what exactly is happening right now. Throughout the years, the game has always shown respect to Eminem and has even said he's avoided him during the beef with 50 Cent. But earlier this year, the game appeared on Drink Champs and this would be the first public situation where the game actually went against Eminem. The interview was released on March 5th, 2022, which was right after the NFL Super Bowl halftime performance with Dr. Dre, Eminem, 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, and Mary J. Blige. In the interview, the game didn't really disrespect Eminem a whole lot. He said he respects him as an MC, but he's way better of a rapper and that he would beat him in a versus. And because this is the first time the game felt like this and said this to the world, it caught a lot of attention. And a lot of people were speculating that it was because the game didn't perform at the NFL Super Bowl halftime show as to why he started going at Eminem and even a little bit Dr. Dre during the interview. The game would go on to elaborate why exactly he challenged Eminem and not anybody else. In the interview he did with Uproxx on April 11, 2022, he explained why exactly he went at Eminem and simply said that 50 Cent can't rap, so he decided to go for the person above him who actually can rap. Why am like what was the origin? You origin know of, why? Yeah. Because 50 can't rap. And so I gotta go a level up and challenge the better rapper. And nobody really takes shots at Eminem off this preconceived notion that he's better than everybody. Well, I want action. So that's the reason why the game started going at Eminem. And now let's get into their relationship, their history, 
and where exactly we are now with it. The game ultimately ended up signing with Dr. Dre's Aftermath in 2003, but at that time, he hadn't had any new music released besides an upcoming mixtape that he would release later in 2004. And speaking of 2004, that's when the game would officially join G-Unit as a joint venture between Dr. Dre's Aftermath and 50 Cent's G-Unit Records. After that signing is when 50 Cent would get involved in helping produce the game's debut album, The Documentary. And with being on the Aftermath G-Unit team, comes with access to Eminem. And since the game was Dr. Dre's newest signee out of Compton, of course, Dr. Dre requested Eminem's on the album, and Eminem appeared on it on the track We Ain't. The game, during an interview with Complex talking about the 10-year anniversary of the documentary, talks about how he recorded We Ain't with Eminem. He said, I flew to 8 Mile, and we went and got it in. I went to work with M for like five days. He had five beats he made me. I rapped on all of them, and we recorded like four or five joints, but that was the best joint. We have songs in the vault, not in my vault, though. He says, Eminem comes in the studio. He looks like a guy that can't rap at all. He just chills with some sweats on, Jordans, a hat, and a jacket or a hoodie or something. Then he comes in with more Taco Bell than the law allows, man. Fucking Taco Supremos and Mountain Dew. And he listens. How you feeling? You like this joint? I do your thing. Then he goes off in the corner and starts spitting like he's in a cypher. If you look at him, you'd think there's five other dudes spitting with him like he's in a real cypher, but it's just him. He writes in circles on the paper. He literally turns the paper man and writes from the inside outside. Some weird shit. M added the samples in the hook. Every voice on there is him. He's like Eddie Murphy and shit. M can do anything. Dude is a genius. Angelo Sanders, who was the manager at that time of the project, said this. I went to Detroit with Game. That was the only record I got a good shout out on. Yo, Lo, get Dre on the phone quick. Tell him M just killed me on my own shit. Laughs. We've been waiting to get that feature forever. And by that time, 50 had been involved and everyone had gotten their records in. M was like, all right, send him to me. M was super professional. He came in. What do you want to do? He played us some beats. We jumped on that record like, this is the one that feels like most what we want to hear you on. We didn't go there trying to get M on some other shit. We wanted him. Love or hate the record. We knew what we wanted with that. We could have done something different, but Game wanted to compete with M on his own shit. And literally, it was what he said on it. M ate him up. After this studio session, this would be the last time, according to Game, that he would ever speak to Eminem. And the reason why this would be the last time the game would ever speak to Eminem is because eventually the game ended up having issues with 50 Cent. If you guys haven't seen my video covering that beef, it's called 50 Cent versus the Game, Who Really Won? Go ahead and check it out. The link is in the description below. While the game was beefing with 50 Cent during 2005 and 2006, the peak of their battle, the game never really mentioned Eminem in his disses. He was mainly focused at 50 Cent and G-Unit, but Eminem would eventually get involved in a slightly subliminal way. In 2006, Eminem was facing his own issues with proof, his best friend passing away, and his own drug addiction problems. But at this time, Eminem was still in the spotlight because he was getting ready to promote his new set of artists that he had signed on his new compilation album, Eminem Presents The Re-Up. During 2006, when Eminem and 50 Cent were promoting the Re-Up album, Eminem, interestingly, never got asked about the game and 50 Cent's beef during the interviews. Although Eminem didn't diss the game in the Re-Up album at all, he was part of the title track with 50 Cent, and 50 Cent on that track ended up dissing Game. In 2007, though, it would seem Eminem would take subliminal shots at the game on one of Cassius's tracks off his County Hound EP project, which was released on May 22nd, 2007. And on the track Pistol Poppin' featuring Eminem, it definitely seems like Eminem is referring to the game because remember, at this time, Game and 50 were knee deep into their beef and it was getting very serious because people were starting to get shot and killed. In Eminem's verse, he makes it very clear that he's been wanting to jump into the issues that 50 Cent has had with the game for a while now and it's been very hard for him to stay out of it. Please tell him right now how hard it is.
and ultimately Eminem did end up staying out of the issues between 50 and game. Eminem, like I said, would go on to face his own personal issues with drug addiction. Then in 2008, the game was gearing up to drop his third studio album, LAX, and the first single titled My Life featuring Lil Wayne ended up leaking online on July 24th, 2008. And the leaked version ended up having some bars that a lot of people took as a diss towards Eminem. See them 24 spinning, I earned them. And all the pictures of me and M, I burned them. So it ain't no proof that I ever walked through 8 Mile. And since it ain't no proof, I never walked through 8 Mile. And this leak wasn't ever supposed to happen. It wasn't Game's intentions for this track to come out. Just hours after that version leaked, Interscope Records and the Game released the original version they intended to come out. And the Game released a statement clearing up the lyrics. He said, when I originally wrote the song My Life, I was trying to think back on events that affected my life and how they changed me. When I first got signed to Aftermath and G-Unit, I was exposed to so many different people from Dre to M to 50 to Proof. I always identified with Proof. We were always cool and he would reach out to me whenever I was going through something. He then goes on to explain how the song was not meant to be offensive. He said, I remember when Proof died vividly and now every time I think about going to Detroit, I get depressed. This is what I was trying to say in that verse. And the more I looked at it, I realized that people would take it the wrong way. The way they are taking it now that it leaked. So I decided to change it so that this bullshit wouldn't happen. And now it's happened anyway. Game in the end apologizes for the version that came out. And he said this, for the record, this is not the version of my album. This is not the version that radio will get. And this is not the version that I just shot the video to. Furthermore, I apologize to anyone who took this the wrong way, as that was never my intention. Eminem never responded to this. And as time went on, Eminem finally made his comeback into the music scene. In 2009, he released Relapse. And in 2010, he released Recovery. And around this time, the game was going at Jay-Z and even took some shots at 50 Cent. But he was gearing up to drop his own album, The Red Album. And while on a promo run for his album, he would get asked about Eminem and his comeback and what he thought about that. In an interview he did in September of 2010, a fan asked him what he thought about Eminem's comeback and the recovery album, and the game said it was a classic and that Eminem is someone you shouldn't mess with. Another question, game, what do you think of recovery? Classic, I love it. Yeah. M's back? M's, I mean, Eminem is Eminem. He's, if you notice in hip hop, Eminem is the only rapper that, that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. Even when I was going at 50 and, you know, and, you know, me and Dre wasn't seeing eye to eye, man. I stayed away from the white dude, you know, because <laughs> he a problem. You know what I'm saying? I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like Eminem, I, I don't think it's a rapper he won't slay. And you don't even want a war with Eminem. You, you know, he crazy. He was talking about he, how he was going to pick fights. If he were to come at you yeah. with like a, a, a industry beef, what would you have done? Run. Yeah, Eminem is, you don't want, you don't understand. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, de I'm a hip hop artist and I'm one of the biggest ones in the world. You don't want a beef with Eminem. He, sh he shreds. He shreds MCs, like for real. And I ain't his best friend or nothing. I'm just saying, I understand that he, you know, he can't be seen by nobody. Jay, no, everybody, no. You don't, you don't mess with the white boy. <laughs> All right, game. Are you the following year, he did an interview with a radio station and claimed Eminem is the greatest of all time while out promoting his Red album. In your opinion, who's the greatest rapper of all time? Total package. Skills, sales, the whole, the whole nine. Everything wrapped into one. Who's the GOAT? Jay-Z. Yeah? Honestly. Where's M? Right above Jay-Z. Because you said all time, but that's not like infinity is the end. So the greatest rapper infinity all time is Eminem. But Eminem and Jay go hand in hand, man. It's just, you know, you can't say Jay without saying Eminem because they're both collectively uh, great artists. They've sold. They've, oh, they, they got it all. They, they got it all, man. They got the money. They got the, the, the swag. They got the fans. They got the legacies, man. They two, two good, two amazing artists, man.
Do you, do you think Jay is a little bit ahead because of the consistency with the 12 albums? I'm sitting here and tell you that Jay is ahead of Eminem so you can make somebody mad. I'm no. saying Eminem is probably somewhere in Detroit chilling, like not tripping, and you want me to piss Eminem off so he can come fucking kill you and me? <laughs> like nah. a hitman? Nah, I'm good. You want me to say something about Jay, I will, but I ain't fucking with him. Why not M, though? M's good. He's that good, right? He's really fucking good. And when he get to, I can't tell you what it really is. You, your ass is grass, man. As the years went on, Game would continue giving props to Eminem on a track he dropped in June of 2014 called The Bigger Than Me. He called himself the Black Slim Shady. These niggas ain't M, they ain't 50 to me. Clear you, it's I'm the Black Marshall Matt. Like. The crazy thing is, as the years went on, nothing was said, but in 2019, when The Game was promoting his ninth studio album, Born to Rap, in an interview he did with Real 92.3 LA on December 12, 2019, he got asked who does he think won the battle between Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly. And this would be the first time publicly the game actually went against Eminem. And he said Machine Gun Kelly's the one that won. The Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem situation, who won that? Speaking honestly, I would say Machine Gun Kelly. And in my personal opinion, I think this is when Game felt like he had a chance to actually go against Eminem because of that battle. Fast forward to 2022, and on February 13th, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and 50 Cent perform at the Super Bowl halftime show. The Game notices this and doesn't like it. And this is officially where the game decides to have issues not only with Dr. Dre, but with Eminem as well. The first inclination that the game didn't approve of the Super Bowl with Dr. Dre not including him was him reposting stories on Instagram of people saying they felt like the game should have been on stage with him at the Super Bowl. And he reposted quite a few of these. And of course, that's when things started to get heated the game then went on Drink Champs a couple months later. So on March 5th, 2022, the game appearing on Drink Champs premiered. And this is where he went at Dr. Dre saying Kanye West did more for him than Dr. Dre did his whole career. And then he actually challenged Eminem to a versus and said that he's the better rapper. And this would be the first time publicly he actually went against Eminem. Uh, and, and, and I used to think Eminem was better than me. So what you saying right he now? Not Challenge, hey, 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 challenge it. And of course, after this Drink Champs interview, the game received a lot of backlash for what he said about Dr. Dre and then challenging Eminem. But just a few days later, on March 6, 2022, the game doubled down on his comments going against Eminem. Eminem is better and, you know, and all that shit. I see it. I see it. I feel you. And you know what? If you feel like Eminem is better than me, that's your opinion. Um, but it's a lot of people that feel like I'm better than Eminem and that's their opinion. Um, me personally, um, nah, is Eminem better than me? Nah, he not, bro. And um, I think the best way to see if he is or if I am is, shit, nigga, let's rap about it. Let's get up. Let's get in the studio. Let's rap about it. Let's do something. Let's put something out. Let's, let's see, because that's what this shit is, bro. It's rap. And for me, I really ain't never even really gave niggas, like, really the just of who I am lyrically. I just been doing this shit because I'm skilled enough to do it. But as far as like some real lyricism, real hip hop, real getting the studio and, you know, take the gloves off and really get it in, like y'all niggas be having me fucked up. I ain't gonna even lie. Ironically, just a few days later on March 8th, 2022, Eminem made RIAA history. He became the most certified artist in RIAA history with 73.5 million new certifications. He's also one of seven artists in every genre or era with three or more diamond album awards. And of course, the day that this happened, the game on Twitter responded to it. He said this, all this talk I see on the net saying Eminem is better than me because he sold more records is like saying McDonald's is better than Tam's Burgers. It's false. They just put more money in McDonald's and promoted the shit out of the Happy Meal dangling toys in kids' faces. Translation for those who don't know how major record companies do business, it's a machine designed to work for the artists who play nice in Massa's house. I was too real, too unapologetically black, and cut the puppet strings early on in my career and decided to rebel. Major labels are known for buying albums and paying off everyone to boost sales of the artists they choose to shine the light on. 
If you ain't dancing to Mass's tune, you lose your budget and the machine is taken off your project and put to work on another artist who's willing to SD. A lot of y'all have no idea what goes on behind the doors of these labels. I've been front and center and I've kept quiet about a lot of shit, mainly because I didn't care about it enough to take time out of my life to open this can of worms. But I'm tired of the lies and bullshit propaganda they throw out there for fans to gobble up conspiracy, smear campaigns, and black balls. Guys been bouncing around this industry my entire career. I'm back outside and this tire shit is about to get shook the fuck up. Throughout these tweets, he went on and on talking about how the music industry is rigged and how they push only certain artists to do well in the music industry. And if you listen, you get more record sales and stuff like that. Then on June 11th, 2022, the game appeared on the I Am Athlete podcast. And for the first time, he admitted he was hurt by the fact that he was not called on to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show. L.A., 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 all around the Super Bowl, and I don't get the call. So... How would you feel? All right, let's... All right. I, I was hurt by that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'll and before the album dropped, the game in various interviews would just voice his opinion on Eminem and say that he's the better rapper and that it's just competition and nothing personal. Fast forward and on August 12th, 2022, the game releases his 10th studio album, Drillmatic Heart vs. Mind. And on track 24, titled The Black Slim Shady, he goes at Eminem, his mother, his daughter Haley, and much more for well over 10 minutes. He even acts like Eminem throughout the track, rapping random bars that have nothing to do with the subject as sometimes Eminem does. He also plays on the Eminem Stan record and continues it on this track as if he's talking to Stan's younger brother who's still alive. The game even taunts Eminem at the end to release a response diss track if he gets approval from Dr. Dre. Then a couple days later, on August 19th, 2022, Seek did an interview with the game on the debut live show with Carl. And this would be the first interview after the album officially came out. So Carl asked the game, why did he diss Eminem on the Black Slim Shady? And the game flat out told the truth and said that he was upset about not appearing on the Super Bowl halftime show and that the only person he could actually diss in terms of music was Eminem because Dr. Dre was a producer and 50 Cent was no longer making music. What made you decide to put the, the M diss record ultimately and just say, yo, this is where I stand? I was mad at Dre about the Super Bowl shit and once I made the decision, that Dre can't rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, niggas write for Dre, not, and you know, it's cool, because Dre produced for niggas. 50 is doing shows, he can't out-rap me, so I ain't nobody else to go at except him, because he's the only rapper out of three of them niggas. After the diss track came out and everyone reacted to it online, there was speculation that Eminem is going to respond on a track because there ended up becoming photos of Eminem, Snoop Dogg, and Dr. Dre in the studio. So people were expecting that Eminem is recording a response. However, as of the making of this video, there is no confirmation that Eminem is recording a response at all. On September 15th, 2022, the game did an interview with Rap Radar, and they also asked him about the Black Slim Shady diss track and why he went at Eminem. The game actually ended up giving Eminem a lot of props like he usually does in various interviews and said that it's just competition and that hip-hop gets boring nowadays and it gets too violent when it comes to diss tracks and this is just for fun. And that's it for this video of The Game versus Eminem. What really happened? What do you guys think? Should Eminem respond? And if he does respond and things go back and forth for quite some time, I'm going to do a follow-up video titled Who Really Won, as I usually do with these videos, and do a follow-up years down the line if things go back and forth. Right now, the beef between 50 and Game has reignited, so I'm sure I'm going to have to do an update video on my old documentary about them down the line as well. But let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys think it's the Game admiring Eminem so much that he wants to get into competition with him, just like he did with Jay-Z? If you haven't seen my Game versus Jay-Z What Really Happened video, you'll see that there's a lot of similarities from Eminem and Jay-Z 
and the fact that they didn't really respond much or give much attention to game. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. For just $3 a month, you can get my videos uncut and raw the way I intended them to be, but couldn't because of YouTube. Plus, you also get access to our Discord community, where we have a great community talking about hip hop and various other things. It's very dope. So only $3 a month, I'd really appreciate the support. Also follow us on social media at QuakeGW and at Diverse Mentality. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.